Hey guys, my name is Kenna and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be covering what ingredients do in cosmetic formulations and skincare formulations. So I'm going to be covering the different classes of ingredients and giving you some examples of what these ingredients do in a formulation as well as some actual ingredient examples so you can then go check your products and see what each ingredient is doing in that formulation and why it is present in the formula. So if you want to learn about the purpose of skincare ingredients in formulations, then just keep watching. Okay, so the first category of ingredients that I'm going to talk about is active ingredients. So these are actually responsible for some bioactivity in skincare, ingredient, in skincare products. And these are the ones that are going to be doing the chemistry on your skin or having some type of anti-aging effect or antioxidant effect. So there's a few different categories and I'll go through and list those categories as well as some examples of what those ingredients are in skincare products. Okay, so starting off, we have alpha and beta hydroxy acids. So this can include glycolic acid, lactic acid, citric acid, and salicylic acid. So these are all chemical exfoliants um, that basically have a low pH and they either clear out the pores, uh, such as salicylic acid, or they remove the top layer of the skin, such as the alpha hydroxy acids. Okay, so next we have some anti-aging ingredients, and these can include things like retinol, ceramides, coenzyme Q10, peptides, hydrolyzed collagen, hyaluronic acid, and niacinamide. So anti-aging ingredients are either going to have a wrinkle reduction effect, or they'll have some type of skin brightening effect, and generally they promote um, collagen and elastin production in the skin, or they stimulate cell turnover, so really looking to reduce the signs of aging. Okay, next we have antioxidants, and these basically scavenge free radicals, and free radicals are extremely reactive compounds that essentially can bump into proteins in your skin as well as DNA and cause damage and ultimately cause cell death or mutagenesis developing into cancer. So it's really important to protect your skin from free radicals using antioxidants. And these can include ingredients such as ferulic acid, resveratrol, vitamin A, vitamin C, and vitamin E. Okay, next we have skin lightening agents. So these are gonna have an anti-pigmentation effect. They're either going to reverse pigmentation in the skin or prevent melanogenesis, so prevent the deposition of melanin within the skin. So these ingredients can include alpha arbutin, kojic acid, resveratrol, uh, vitamin A, niacinamide, and vitamin C. So another category for active ingredients is humectants, and what they do is they draw moisture out of the environment and bind it and hold it next to the surface that they're on. So they do prevent trans-epidermal water loss, and they can include ingredients such as algae extract, hyaluronic acid, aloe vera, butylene glycol, ceramides, hydrolyzed collagen, glycerin, propylene glycol, sorbitol, and honey is a great natural humectant. Okay, and then the last category for over for active ingredients is over-the-counter drug ingredients. So this is things like antiperspirants, it could be anti-acne ingredients, um, as well as things like sunscreen, and um, also like anti-dandruff ingredients as well. Those are classified as over-the-counter drugs in the US, and in Canada they're either over-the-counter drugs or natural health products. Okay, moving away from the active ingredients in a formulation, next I'm going to talk about surfactants. So surfactant stands for surface active ingredients, and essentially they cleanse and build foam at the interface between oil and water. So they have the ability to kind of um, grab both oil and water particles and emulsify them and essentially cleanse. So this can include just like regular soap, it can also be like Castell soap, and then there's some detergents that are used such as cocoa betaine, cocoa glucose, decal glucoside, sodium lauryl lactylate, sodium lauryl sulfate, and sulfosuccinate. So you'll find these ingredients in any product that has some type of cleansing or foaming action. So things like cleansers, uh, soaps, makeup removers, um, shampoo, Okay, next we have physical exfoliants. So these can include things like walnut shell powder, the apricot shell powder, uh, colloidal oatmeal, jojoba beads, and rice bran beads. So these are going to have 
some type of physical kind of grain or granule that is actually physically exfoliating the skin using small particles. Okay, moving on to the next category, which is emulsifiers. So an emulsifier is going to suspend and hold water and oil really close together, which often they don't like to be close together at all. They generally repel each other because oil is not miscible with water. So we use emulsifiers and formulations like creams and lotions to actually get them to stick together and not separate out. So there's a couple different types of emulsification systems. You can either have a product that is mostly oil and it has a little bit of water in it. So you'll have a water and oil emulsification system. And those ingredients can include glycerol stearate SE, lecithin, sorbitin stearate, glycerol oleate, lorith 3 and PEG-8. So next we have the reverse. So essentially we have a water formulation that has some oil in it. So this is more classic for like lotions and creams. So in this case, we will have oil in water emulsification systems. And some examples of these include PEG-7 glycerol cocoa weight, PEG-40 hydrogenated castor oil, polysorbate 20, satyryl alcohol, satyryl 25, glycerol stearate citrate, stearic acid, and stearyl alcohol. And you might've noticed a couple of those ingredients did end with the word alcohol. So that was the satyryl alcohol and sterile alcohol, but these are not typical alcohols like you would think like ethanol. Um, they're actually waxes, so it's not a type of alcohol that you need to be worried about if you have dry or sensitive skin. It is literally just a veg vegetable wax that has an OH group on it, so it's named an alcohol, but it's not the alcohol that you typically think of that is harsh on the skin and drying. Okay, and then the next category is preservatives. So this is really important in formulations to prevent the growth of microbes such as bacteria, yeast, and mold. And some examples of these include benzyl alcohol, dehydroacetic acid, parabens, uh, phenoxyethanol, sorbic acid, gluconolactone, and sodium benzoate. Okay, so next I'm gonna be talking about some stabilizers. So stabilizers are generally in a formulation to prevent discoloration or the rancidity of oils. They also protect your preservative system from breaking down when it's exposed to things like metal ions and you know change in pH and things like that. So the most popular one is EDTA, which is a metal ion chelator. So it's, a, it's going to bind metal ions and prevent them from messing up the chemistry within the formulation and throwing off the preservative system. Uh, another one is BHT. So this again is, um, it's an antioxidant and it's going to stabilize lipids in a formulation and prevent the rancidity of oils. And then lastly, I have uh, sodium gluconate. And again, this is a chelating agent, so it's going to bind metal ions. It also helps uh, stabilize the pH. In addition, it also does help with uh, preventing the rancidity of oils as well. So those are just in there to kind of keep the formulation good as long as possible. Okay, so next we're going to talk about emollients. So emollients have a smoothing and softening effect on the skin, and they're generally composed of like natural butter, so like shea butter, cocoa butter, mango butter, natural oils such as like hemp seed oil, grape seed oil, jojoba oil, any kind of plant oil that you can think of, and also things like silicones and acetyl palmitate, isolanolin, isopropyl myristate, uh, mineral oil, squalane, and sucrose cocoate. So those are all emollients that are going to have a softening effect on the skin. And emollients are really important for people that have really dry skin. So I have really dry skin, so my skin cannot get enough emollients, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, so next we have thickeners. So we can either have thickeners that are going to like gel up and thicken a water formulation, or we can have thickeners that are more like waxes and they're going to thicken up a oil solution or like a cream or a lotion. So some examples include glucose, sterile palmitate, tapioca starch, carbamer, acrylate copolymer, acetyl alcohol, guar gum, cellulose, sorbitol, xanthan gum, and then some natural waxes such as beeswax, candelilla wax, and carnauba wax. Okay, the next category is solvents. So solvents are in formulations for, they can, it can be a few different reasons. Generally, they're in there to dissolve some type of active ingredient, whether that is a plant extract, an antioxidant, you know, one of those anti-wrinkle ingredients, or potentially even the preservative. 
So it's going to be used to dissolve that active ingredient to get it into the formulation and for it to be stable. Sometimes solvents also help with the um, absorption to actually penetrate those active ingredients into the skin better. And some examples include ethyl hexyl palmitate, glycerin, isododecane, isolanolin, and propylene glycol. All right, next we've got pH adjusting ingredients. So these are either going to lower the pH or increase the pH of a solution to get the desired pH of that formulation. So generally, if you have something like an alpha hydroxy acid peel, you actually have to add something that is going to increase the pH because the natural pH of those alpha hydroxy acids is too low for the skin and it could burn the skin. On the flip side, when you have something like a cleanser, the pH of surfactants and detergents is usually above eight and we want to bring that down to about 5.5 so we'll put in something that is a little bit more acidic to lower the pH. So some pH adjusting ingredients include triethanolamine, citric acid, sodium gluconate, magnesium hydroxide, and sodium hydroxide. And then last but not least we do have fragrance and aroma ingredients. So these can be listed either as essential oils or essential oil components such as limonene, linalool, um, or they can just be listed as fragrance slash perfume and in that case you really don't know what makes up that fragrance because often fragrance ingredients are proprietary formulations and they do not have to be disclosed on an ingredients list. So fragrance ingredients often also include things like solvents, antioxidants, and preservatives, but they're just not listed out in their actual names. All right, guys, that is it for me today. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already, please do subscribe to my channel. I do post five times a week, and I'd love for you to join this awesome community of science babes that we're building on here. And if you have any other questions about cosmetic formulation or any of the information that I covered, as always, please just leave it in the comments below. Or you can send me a DM on Instagram at Kenna Whitnell. And yeah, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video. I don't know if you guys are ready for this, but we got a... Uh... We might be doing a merch drop soon. Ooh.